Welcome to this episode of the Redneck Mystic Lawyer Podcast. With us is our Redneck Mystic Lawyer and resident heretic, Sloan Bashinsky. And I'm your heretic in training, Bob. Heretic in training. Heretic in training. Yeah, it's been a different difficult conversion for you, I'm sure. Almost like being born again. <laughs> we had to dunk you in water and fire and volcanoes and to tsunamis. That's of me and the angels and all sorts of other lovely things being chomped on by T Rexes and, and orcas and uh, moray eels and pythons and and cobras and crates and uh Carl Great Snake. Pyrenees. Great Pyrenees, dogs, coyotes, wolves, sheep, lions, turkeys. Oh, turkeys? Turkeys, yeah. There is a thing with turkeys. We won't talk about that. <laughs> That's an old uh, veterinary school joke. We won't talk about that. Maybe later. Yeah, maybe yeah. later. Yeah. Anyway, uh, to the audience, uh, we've been gone for a while from being on the air, mostly because Bob is, has actually experienced several near-death experiences in the medical sense, yes. <laughs> including one yesterday. But he was so bored and, and, and tired of being attended to by people that are trying to keep him alive that he, he insisted we try to do a podcast tonight. So he's sacrificing a great deal uh, of his boredom uh, to be here with us tonight. So good boy. Thank you. Do I get a biscuit at least? <laughs> and uh, so we're going to cover a lot of terrain tonight. And toward the end, we're going to talk about the recent verdict in the uh, in the defamation case in the federal court in New York City involving, uh, what's Jean Carroll? Is that her Jean name? Jean Carroll, yes, sir. And, and Donald. Donald Trump, uh, who I think some people have heard of. They may not have heard of Gene Carroll, but they certainly have heard, I guess, of Donald Trump, unless they have been living in a cave with uh, the soundproof cave for the last eight years or longer. Now, but I want to do some other things first. Uh, so that's the bait to keep you around, or you can flash forward and get to it eventually. We're going to try to make it real interesting for you get before you get there, so you may miss some fun if you flash forward. So we had got an email, or Bob did, uh, the other day, which I'd like for you to read. Yes, it short. says, Dear Bob and or Slime, my name's Milo. I've watched most, if not all, of your podcasts. I noticed that you guys have not been busy lately, and I had also been checking in on Sloan's blog where he has talked about his run for the president. He seems to keep up with current events on the blog, but it seems as though the campaign podcast have ended. How is Sloan going to wrap that up, or is it wrapped up? Thanks, Milo. And Milo is in Minnesota. That's a part of the United States. To people that don't know, Minnesota is a state. <laughs> I, this is true. Somewhere that don't know that. That's, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but uh, we have an international audience now. Uh, and the answer to Milo's question is, hell no, I'm not finished. Although I'm waiting on the Lord to take me and hope the mothership comes and fetches me any moment uh, while I'm still here living and breathing and kicking, I guess I just have to keep doing what I've been doing. And Bob is my great assistant. Uh, and when I'm gone, I hate to think what the angels are going to start having him do. <laughs> yeah, me he will, too. He will have to fill in the gaps. <laughs> so... I uh, had actually been putting a lot of the political stuff on the tiny kingdom blacksheep.blogspot.com blog. And I started doing that because some dreams that kind of mixed me up. 
and I wasn't putting anything new on the redneck the redneck mystic lawyer for president dot blogspot dot com blog. Well, yesterday I transferred. I don't know, maybe fifteen posts at least fifteen from, posts from the uh, black sheep blog post to the redneck mystic lawyer for president dot blogspot dot com blog. And there's a whole lot of stuff there. A lot of it's got to do with the war in Gaza. Not all of it. Right. And uh, and how I, sitting in the White House, would view it or sitting here in my living room with this nice painting behind me. Let's see if I can get it where the but, light's not in it so bad. Beautiful. Oh, the, 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 the ships look beautiful. The light. Yeah, uh, yeah. well, you know, it's a print. I got it in the thrift store when I was furnishing this apartment, along with the couch I'm sitting on. Yeah, I got that in the thrift store, too. Yes, and the, all the cushions are full of down feathers. Okay, this is a very old couch. They don't make these things anymore, I don't guess, unless you are very rich or a Saudi sheik or something, or Donald Trump. That, maybe Donald won't be so rich after Gene Carroll gets through with him. We'll talk about but We'll talk about that later. later. Yes. Now... Uh, today, uh, which is, uh, just a minute, I think the 25th of... Uh, today is the 26th. Is it? Yes, right. Friday but, the 26th. Yeah, let's see. You know, yeah, I'm looking at the date yesterday. Yesterday, I put this post up on the Redneck mystic lawyer for president dot blogspot dot com that's january twenty fifth two thousand twenty four the name of that post is the beatings will continue until ears and morale improve outlaw poets versus the zombie apocalypse you got it now what what triggered that uh all of that was poetic outlaws which i subscribe to on i think facebook or is a Substack? Uh, he has a both Facebook yeah, and Substack. Yeah, I'm on, on Facebook, but now I'm on a Substack, and I pay him for it because he's doing some good work. Eric Rittenberry. I, 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 Project Outlaws. Anybody that's into poetry and really fine uh, classical writing, uh, and I recommend this. This this particular. Uh, Substack or Facebook. Eric Rittenberry is the Facebook producer, but he is is he calls it poetic outlaws, and you can see, oh hell, <laughs> you can see his emblem right there at the top. Quills instead of the crossbones and a skull, which is like the and skull and crossbones that pirates uh, use. The, the, the crossbones are two white feather pen quills okay and the and the and the uh and the uh and the and i think the uh the the devil i mean the the the, the skull the pirate or whatever he is is uh hell's angel he's uh, uh <laughs> smoking a cigarette okay he's grinning and all that and uh and he has quite. He has a good following, uh, and he puts up a lot of stuff. A lot of it I really like. Some of it I like less. But he's he's into the the older poets and writers. He doesn't put up much that's recent. And so he put this thing up. The future, I've got it. The future belongs to the poet by Henry Miller, and I'm just going to quote how it begins and. You go to the blog. There's a there's a there's a link there where you click and read everything he wrote. That Henry was quoted as saying about uh, the future belongs to the poets, not the past. So no, I read. I'm gonna read it. We live entirely in the past, nourished by dead thoughts, dead creeds, dead sciences, and it is the past which is engulfing us, not the future. The future always has and always will belong to the poet. And that was the theme of the entire thing that I read 
underneath it. Now I'm going to read to you my reply, which came out of me about as fast as I could fucking write it. Which meant the muse was working. I didn't, right have, on. I didn't have to think too much, you know, do the try to do the English grammar right, punctuation right, but but the the substance of it just hopped out of me, which is often happens when I'm writing a poem, for example. This is actually a poem, but it is, as you can see, pretty verse. Not laid out in verse and all of that. So it goes like this. I hope you'll bear with me. Although I think all of life is poetry, it's freaking hard for me to see poetry in a lot of human dramas. Say, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Democrats, Republicans, MAGAs, KKK, Antifa, Brown Boys, Christendom, Judaism, Islam, Ukraine, American politics, et cetera, barf, et cetera, barf, et cetera, barf, B-A-R-F, as they throw up. Um, <laughs> I think it's not the zombie apocalypse future that belongs to the poets, as there might not be a future. The way humanity is killing the planet, as well as many of its own members, and mangling the psyches and souls of the temporary survivors, I think it's the present, the now, today, that belongs to the poets, for it looks to me that it is the poets, the artists, the writers, the musicians, who answer only their muse, who feel sense and see what is really going on. Parade it naked, devoid of fig leaves, the good, the bad, the beautiful, the ugly, and the horrible. Who will at least have tried to bear the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help them God cross their heart and hope to die and burn in hell forever if they don't right now love and praise what is good and beautiful and assault and ravage and fuck and cut to ribbons that which opposes what is real and important, and valuable, and necessary, and precious. That is a call to arms to the resistance, a call to arms to the culture jammers, a call to arms to anybody who doesn't want to be locked up in a herd and brainwashed and turned into a zombie. That's the zombie apocalypse. Agreed. I'll read what came next. The guy named Ethan Summers. Don't know him. You don't even know where he lives. Could be in America. Could be somewhere else. It's hard to change anything when you speak to so many deaf ears. I replied. The muse demands airtime. Her slaves ignore her and experience her sorrow, displeasure, wrath. Even ears receive mention in this poem below. Eve's answer. That's the title of the poem. Vexing truth. Life is poetry. Poetry is life. There's no more to say, but that would make God a really dull boy now, wouldn't it? Eve, that's me talking. So here comes Eve. So Eve, what say you after all you have been, still are, blamed for everything that went wrong with Hugh Man E T? Well, do you really want to hear what I got to say? Is this one of those, be careful what you ask for pregnancies? Well, is it? That's Eve talking to me. Probably, but say what you wish. I expect you need to be heard. Heard? Heard? <laughs> Why do you mention ears? Yes, ears. Such important receptacles, yet filled with concrete, shit, propaganda, beliefs, certainties. Well, it's not, let's not leave out superstition and religion. Now, should we? By the way, where do you suppose God came from or out of? And why do you suppose I made Eve in my own image? Because Adam was so bored and dull, so predictable, he was boring the shit out of me. That's why. <laughs> now, shush. Don't go around calling me on any of that. I've had quite enough of the religious right to last me the rest of forever. Ethan replied, well, if God is pleased or rather entertained, then who am I to comment? I replied, I think she, capital S for God, <laughs> 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 I'm slightly pleased and maybe not 
and is even is not even slightly pleased and maybe she might appreciate any help you can lend her question mark smiley thank you know sadly i haven't has ethan come back sadly i haven't been blessed with the gifts necessary to please the gods yet if that helps in any way i try to use my ears as well as i can as i imagine most people in this community do which is true I replied, I think the gods are appeased when people use their gifts and don't get swallowed up and stifled by joining herds and losing their individuality, common sense, decency, and openness to change and appreciation of mystery and adventure. End of blog post. I just read you the whole blog post. Here, here. In case you I didn't want to go read it, you had to listen to it. <laughs> now. <clears throat> That was my clap of appreciation. It, now, what's the name of the guy that, that, that sent the email? Milo. Milo. Thank you so much, Milo, for prompting me to get into a dither and get my my feathers ruffled up and my ass in gear. Uh, Bob has been storing in a digest at the Internet Free Internet Library. That's archive.org. Uh, the the installments at the blog, the Redneck Mystic Lawyer for President .blogspot .com. It's not a completed book. It's not been published there as a book. It's in a digest, uh, which you can read if you register with the library. It's just like going into a physical library and registering, and then you can check out a book if you do it online. Is that about it, Bob? Correct. And uh, he's also... You also select that you want periodicals when they are asking you what materials you want to access because the way that we're putting this out there is as a digest that is constantly updated from with new blog posts. So it is a periodical. All right. But it's the title of it is the Red Deck League. Mystic Lawyer podcast at that at the library, right? But you can't correct. It's not available as a checkout book like my other books. Okay, you can go to the archive and put my name in there, and all my books are going to come up. The digest won't come up. Uh, anybody can do that without being a member of that library, but you have to join the library to read the digest. That's correct. That is correct. That was all. I, I learned all that about an hour ago. Uh, by talking to Bob. He does all sorts of sneaky things behind my back. <laughs> hey, you told me to have something at the Internet Library that would be constantly updated as you wrote for. Yeah, but I didn't I didn't know anything about how you went about it till about an hour ago. And uh, it just fascinates me that you're so clever and figure this shit out, which I would never figure out. And both for you, nobody in, uh, in the Philippines or Red China or Russia or Belarus or India would ever heard of me, for examples. Or, or the work we do, which is free, no ads, no solicitation. We don't ask for nothing, which is kind of unusual, but not entirely. Very unusual. Well, not entirely, because you told me something about the free internet, li free internet library today. Oh, wait a minute. Let me get, get there's also, you've also created a digest for the uh, uh, Redneck Mystic Lawyer for President. And no, we already talked about that, but you also created one for Tiny King and Black Sheep, volume two, right? Correct. And there are a lot of new posts there also, but you have to join the library online to be able to access any of those digests. Now, back to this wonderful thing you told me was happening at the Internet, Free Internet Library. They also carry, of course, music that you can. Well, they carry music, and don't forget, they also carry movies that people make with their own money they people are inspired by certain things say for example star wars and or star trek for that matter and people will get together and they will write scripts they will edit them and then they will enlist their friends or even semi-professional actors to be the actors in them and they put these movies up there. But please tell them about the music, too. Well, you told me that uh, there was some history back in the day when uh, 
I don't know if I know it, know this well enough by heart. I'll I'll, I'll explain. I'd like to explain the history that that you talked to me about an hour and a half ago about explaining. Explain I'm going to pick on one particular band, but this is how it began. In 2002, when archive.org expanded worldwide, people wanted to put up more than just the written word. So what a lot of people had done was back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, they had taken microphones and reel-to-reel -reel recorders to concerts at major bands. And the so major... Like Chicago or Steppenwolf or the Beatles or whatever. Grateful the, Dead. Grateful Dead, all that. So they, they, and they put that in the Internet Library? They took they they took these live recordings, and they were allowed to put them up for free initially, because it allowed the bands to have access to material they didn't even have archived. But this well, at, wait a minute. This was put at the Internet Library. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. After a period of time. When the bands had completed any completed getting material for free from the people who'd recorded it, that the bands had not archived themselves, they told the internet library, hey, you can't allow people to store our music up there anymore. Oh. So in God, response God, stepped in and fucked up something really good for everybody, right? Uh yeah. Except <laughs> a lot of musicians were inspired that the music was free. That is something that Jerry Garcia said and inspired the entire Internet Library's music division. So good. in the I'm spirit grateful dead. Go ahead. How many times are you going to interrupt me? Well, I, I, there was once, I, I'll tell you, and, and I was living in Boulder, and I'm on, this is on me. You'll understand why I'll ask the question if you let me tell the story. So I was sitting out on Pearl Street Mall talking to some friends of mine. Some bit, people came up, and they looked like they were distressed. And I said, what's wrong? They said, well, Jerry Garcia died. And I said, who's he? Okay, so there may be another dumbass out there besides me. At any rate, <laughs> with the belief, having Jerry Garcia said that the music was free, a number of people began posting their music, all manner, shape, size, and type of music. And they offer it for free. At the Internet Library. Yes. And But to, re to listen to it, you have to join, right? It's like our digest. Is that correct? No. Just oh. like you can download the books, you can also access oh. these people's music. And if you wish, download it. So you don't even have to join the library to listen to the music that's being put up there for free by musicians, right? Correct. All right. You don't have to join to watch the fan movies. Now, what about our podcast, which is are all on the, the torrent system at the library? All of our podcasts in there are torrent. They have torrent links to them, and you do not have to download them. You do not have to join in order to use the torrents. Well, how would somebody that didn't know how to use torrents, such as myself, uh, get into the torrent system and watch our or other uh, podcasts at the library? A piece of software is downloaded called a bit torrent. I didn't get that. Try a again. bit torrent. B I T T O. R R E N T. That is the piece of software 
They go to the internet library. They find a piece of work that they would like to download. And in the list of file types that the library keeps, there are torrent links there. A person clicks on the torrent link. The software pops up and says, do you want to download this piece of material? Yes or no? You click yes. And people all over the world are hosting these documents a simple piece at a time. And through many connections and many hosts taking these very small pieces, they are able to assemble a large file in very quick time. And you have your books or episodes of podcasts. Or the digest of evolving books. If you're a member. Yeah, my books and anybody that gets works out an arrangement with the library for their music or their books or their poetry can end up with the same thing we we enjoy with this library, which doesn't charge us a penny. It's a free library. It's, it's funded by universities, I understand, right? Yes. Okay, in America, right? Worldwide. So. Worldwide, okay. All right, so this, and you know, these people are, uh, they believe in freedom of expression. Uh, they are much more forgiving of what we put up and other people put up than, say, uh, some other places. <laughs> yeah. They are very, they're much more interested in something new or novel or different or uh, off the beaten path. Uh, as are all the Torrent subscribers based on our experience with Torrent compared to our experience with YouTube. For example, our last podcast, uh, which we did, what, about a month ago now? Yes. And we well, don't want to get into which sites did it, but where we tried to host it, we were blacklisted on that podcast. Well, I want you to give us the name of the podcast. All righty here. The podcast name is The Redneck Mystic Lawyer's Survey of Landmind America and the Cost of Truth. The Cost of Truth. Now, I I told you today, I, I would have preferred to call it of, of Death Threat America, but we might not have been able to get it up anywhere if we'd have done that. That's almost guaranteed. And so you 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 gave it a different name. Now you checked the other day, and so far that podcast had two hundred sixty four thousand complete watches. It's up to three hundred and twelve thousand as of today, because I need to oh, ask that about three days ago. It is right now three hundred and twelve thousand, and we checked four days, four and a half days ago. All right, so. That's just for one podcast, which uh, is only in the torrent system. Correct. We're not getting any help from any of the other providers that we might use for that many complete watches, which you figured out how to how to uh, you know pull out of the data out of the uh, uh, the the what I call <laughs> the, the cyber universe to come up with how many people that actually watch the whole podcast. But you also told me that the podcast, can I name the who picked it up and was running with it in pieces? Sure. Rumble, which is similar to YouTube, but it's, uh, it's very conservative. It is headquartered in Canada, I understand. Uh, because of the Canadian hate speech laws, it was kicked out of Canada, and its hosting is now somewhere in the Bahamas or South America. Oh, that's news to me. Okay. But Rumble is basically, uh, it's loved by the MAGAs. That is, the lemmings that follow Donald Trump. Donald Trump. And all kinds of arch-conservative or right-wing type people. This is a this is a right wing uh, a 
it's a right wing version of YouTube. It is a right wing platform for putting out videos that are so completely on the MAGA spectrum, so far right that Attila the Hun would blush if he saw them. So you learned uh, through your investigative uh, efforts, uh, which always amazed me, uh, that uh, a number of people that subscribe to the Rumble and come across our Landmine America, the Cost of Truth podcast. Is that correct? That is correct. Absolutely. They, they had they had snip uh, segments out of it or cut clips out of it and posted uh, those clips on Rumble for the poor purpose of making uh, mocking us, you and me, especially me, since they can see me, and uh, and and making fun of us and, and and trying to you know I guess uh, make themselves feel big and important. Is that basically sum it up? That's it. But yes, and and then uh, they all disappeared. They and did. The clips were no longer there on Rumble. Now, for Rumble to take something down, uh, it tells you how extreme the material is in terms of the threats, the speech that was being used against us, the invective. Yeah, uh, like Landmine America. So they, 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 they were the same kind of speech that was used with the judges that rule against the judges that rule Amendment 14, Section 3 applied to Trump, and he couldn't be on the ballot, right? Death threat. Correct. Same thing that happened up there in that uh, civil trial in New York about whether Trump and his companies were going to be fined a lot of money for misleading lenders, for example, by inflating the assets of Trump's company. That, that judge and his law clerk, they, they received a lot of death threats, you know, uh, you know, email, social media kind of stuff. All right. Same thing happened to the Colorado judges that rule Amendment 14 applied against Trump. To Trump. Same thing happened to a radio station which had discussed a number of our videos in the state of Colorado. Right. They right. were a digital radio station. They broadcasted via software generated radio. They broadcast their work over uh, satellite radio for people who have satellite radio in their vehicles. They broadcast their work on Spotify. And when they considered your Amendment 14, Section 3 wait, argument. Wait a minute. They considered it by interviewing a federal judge on the air. I'm getting to that, for the love of God. Go ahead. And they did have a, and and you actually listened to this. Uh, and so you know what happened. The judge was, was, was beating up on me and tell, I didn't know what I was talking about, but she finally got the judge to admit that, that Joe Biden should have filed the action himself, but he did not which was the whole point of my law school exam question, that the, which you can read for a member 14 law school exam question and answer at the internet library. You can watch the podcast there. It's also on YouTube. Uh, a member 14 law school exam question. And after that, as I understand from what you told me, the radio station's insurance carrier canceled the policy. Because of the number of death threats they got. The yes, insurance, sir. The insurance uh, that the radio station got and the radio station went off the air and has not been back on the air as far as we know, right? No, they are have not been back on the air. And at this time, due to the fact that they cannot get a bond, they can't broadcast in the state of, they cannot broadcast, have a broadcast originating from the state of Colorado. Colorado had a talk show host get killed back in the 80s by far-right people. His name was Alan Berg. 
So Colorado requires that anyone who does any type of radio station carry a bond in case there happens to be something terrible happen, a bombing, a shooting, anything like that, and they're protected. So I was getting ready to go somewhere with this, and now it's left my brain. Flew off into the Pleiades or somewhere, or maybe uh, Vulcan. Maybe hell, a Vulcan or Venus. Uh, it may come back to me. But, oh, yes, it did come back. This was part of our podcast that only ended up in the torrent. We talked about all of this back in the previous podcast and about the the death threats that you experienced for becoming vocal in your county where you lived before you moved to your safe house. Where I live, where I live. Yeah. yeah. Live, 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 live. I'm still, you know, in Hazard County. You're still where? I'm still in Hazard County. Oh, you're still in Hazard. Yeah, you ain't got out of it yet. All right. But anyway, I mean, contracts were taken out on your life. Uh, some men got in pickup trucks cornered you on a back road and ran you off a ravine into a tree and left you for dead. Yeah, it's really pleasant for me to in go America, back through that. In America, UK, UK get at the feds involved, uh, uh, investigate, investigate county commissioners or, uh, or the state, state law enforcement without having contracts written on your life and actually an attempt made on it. This happened to you, so we know this ain't made up, okay? You were told by law enforcement the contracts had come out on your life, right? Actually, law enforcement didn't do anything. However, I did know some people who unfortunately have dabbled in, shall we say, crime, Oh, and how you they made me aware that... Uh, me running my mouth had had consequences. Yeah, and so we well, also got the feds involved investigating Mark Meadows for claiming he lived in a certain... Hey, place. hey, 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 that was one of those things that made it to where websites didn't want to carry, so let's stay, let's... You know, we've got 30 minutes left. Let's leave it that be. It at length in that podcast. Yes, and 316,000 people, 312,000, excuse me, people have watched it, so they I'm know. I can promote the podcast if you'll let me keep talking, because some people haven't watched it yet. You okay with that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, Mark Meadows claimed he lived in a certain county in a certain state, and there he ran for, for the Congress, right? Yes, he was in the and House of Representatives. In fact, he did not live in that county, and you proved it to the feds, and they got on to him about that. And later, of course, after that, he became Donald Trump's uh, chief of staff, right? He became Donald Trump's chief of staff. The investigation right. was going on because he became Trump's chief of staff. Right. right. And so this had nothing to do with the theft threats against you, but uh, it could well have led to that if they could figure out who did all that. <laughs> and you just advertised it. Thanks. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is. Only adults can have a conversation like this. Children are not allowed. Okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. We, all of this is in the podcast that we're talking about. It's already out there. Uh, Sloan, don't get upset. I'm not, I, I'm just laughing at the irony. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So, anyway, I'm not upset with you in the least. Go right ahead. All right. And, uh, so if you haven't watched that podcast, read the title again. Landmind America and the Cost of Truth. All right. You might want to get into the library and, and, and try to find it there. 
and the way Bob described how to do that. It's up to you. Oh, uh, I feel like every time I do a podcast, I'm painting bullseyes all over me. And uh, but I'm 81 years old, and my star has pretty much run its course. And you heard the poem I read that wasn't written as a poem. That uh, for me is is unconscionable to shut up. There's a guy in Germany named Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a respected German theologian. He wrote a book called The Cost of Discipleship, which was about the difference between cheap grace, he called it, and the real deal, if you're a Christian. It was a highly respected book uh, during World War II, he and some other guys, uh, well, I he also said, uh, quoted as saying, silence in the face of evil itself is evil. God will not hold us guiltless. And so during World War II, and some other guys tried to assassinate Hitler, and they got caught, and they got put in concentration camps, and that was the finish of them, the end of them. Okay, so I said this, and no children need to be around for this kind of discussion. And I don't mean necessarily five-year-old kids, although if you're 25 or 30 or 50 or 70 and this makes you squeamish, Donald Trump has primed his lemmings, his maggots, to do far more worse things if he is not elected in 2024 than were done on January 6, 2020. And that's what people like me are looking at in America. Now, the people over on the right, they ain't worried about that, okay? No. Nope. It, it don't bother them at all. Believe it or not, they kind of like the notion. Yeah, the kid who wore the headdress and called himself the QAnon shaman and who was one of the people who assaulted a Capitol policeman just was released. He was given a paid interview and in the interview, he ended it by saying he was absolutely loyal to Trump. He did not have any regrets about spending 24 months in prison, federal prison for Donald Trump and he was going to vote for him again. And Mitch McConnell, the Speaker of the Senate or House? House. Uh, Senate, Senate, Senate. Senator McConnell from Kentucky. Former Speaker of the Senate. I think the, the Democrats have control of that now. Do I have it backwards? No, you're right. They have the control of the... Uh... After, 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 immediately after the January 6th insurrection in 2020, he said, Donald Trump, you are the cause of all of this. And, uh, you know, he and Mitch, Mitch McConnell was furious with Trump, but he's going to vote for Trump. Count on it if he runs in 2024. Absolutely. He's already pledged his loyalty. Here is what Mitch McConnell has said within the last 72 hours because the primaries. When asked if he was going to give his support to Donald Trump, he said, whoever is the Republican nominee, I will be behind them 100%. This is in the New York Times and yeah. it is the Monday issue from this week. Got it. And so what we're looking at here is what is commonly called a cult. C-U-L-T. Yep. And if you know anything about cults, even if you belong to one, which many people do, well, they wouldn't say they do, but they do. Uh, having having debates online with Chris Hedges' cult and Caitlin Johnson's cult, uh, which are 
giving Hamas a free pass and blaming everything on Israel that's going on in Gaza. These people just, I wonder if they, if they still shitting in their diapers, okay? Probably. Uh, those are cults. The Republican Party is a cult. The MAGAs are a cult. Antifa is a cult. KKK is a cult. The Proud Boys are a cult. The Re Democrats are a cult. All true. If you belong to a cult, you're fucked. Spiritually. Whether you know it or not. Your standing with God, if that's important to you, is seriously compromised. Whether you know it or not, your karma will come eventually, if not in this life, some other time, whether you know it or believe it or not. It's just how it is. It's that way for everybody. As you sow, you reap, Jesus said in the Gospels. The Christians don't pay much attention to that or that Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. The road to life is difficult and the gate narrow and few enter. The workers are the work is great, but the laborers are few. They think it's all you gotta do is say, I believe Jesus was the Son of God and he died to save my me from my sins, even though I hadn't been born two thousand years later, that you're saved. It's got nothing to do with Jesus. Jesus taught a way to live, which is trampled every day by Christendom. Unfortunately. So I think the thing going on in Gaza is horrible. I think Hamas baited Israel very very smartly to do exactly what it is doing in Gaza so that the whole world, except for half of America, would turn against Israel. Because Hamas knew he could not beat Israel militarily, so he went into the court of public opinion to beat Israel. Today, the world court made a ruling that did not come down well for the African, South African uh, Petitioners, they basically just kind of left the parties where they were at, Israel and Hamas. They said, you know, Israel, you need to start monitoring the genocide, and we want to hear reports about that in your investigations. And Hamas, we want you to release all of the October 7th prisoners. The World Court figured out, I guess maybe because they're lawyers and they ain't completely brain dead yet. Right on that Hamas indeed had baited Israel to do exactly what Hamas wanted Israel to do in Gaza, to come after Hamas and kill anybody in the way and therefore ruin Israel's reputation a lot more worse than it already ruined it. That's what that's about. That's what happened. And if you're grown up, you can see that. If you're not, you can't see it. And the, and the justices on the world court saw what the hell was going on. Now, there will be later proceedings and all that, but that they just gave the South African government animal crackers, okay? They did not give the South African petitioners, I mean, not government, what they wanted. They did not give Chris Hedges what he wanted or Caitlin Johnstone what she wanted, but I can tell you, they. I've already read Chris's column, whole, he's praising the world court and saying what it all did, that hell. They had nothing to be happy about if you Chris or his cult because the world court didn't buy it. It saw what had happened on October 7th. It understood why Israel had responded the way it did. It didn't like what Israel did, but they know it was a trap. That, did, that Hamas had no concern for the welfare of any of the Gazans. The more Gazans got killed by the Israel's IDF, uh, that's the uh, Israeli Defense Force, the better for Hamas and the publicity of people like Hedges and Caitlin Johnston and CNN and everybody else will we give to the conflict because that's what Hamas wanted and they're doing it for free for Hamas. They're their publicists for Hamas. And the world court said, uh-uh, there are two guilty parties here. I'm a lawyer. I can read in the, I can, I can see what the court's saying. Okay. <laughs> right on. They, they cut the baby in half. So let's get back to the legal the legal bombshell 
that occurred in the United States of America today in a federal court in New York State, New York City. And we were going to begin with the dream you had last night. Why, yes, I dreamed of a cat carrying around a white rat with a toupee that was similar to the hair that Donald Trump wears. And I told you that was about Donald Trump. No, no, Carol. What's her whole name? E. Jean Carroll. E. Jean Carroll. That's initial E? Yes. Right, initial e. e. Jean Carroll and the Donald Trump defamation lawsuit in New York City and federal court. And you had that dream last night. Correct. After you just had a near death experience. Literally. Now, the doctor told you if you'd have waited another, another what, half hour, you'd be dead? Yes. That's how close it was. That's what the doctor told you. There would have been nothing he could do for you if you'd waited any longer. So you had this dream after the doctor had saved your sorry ass again. And you've had several doctors save your sorry ass lately. <laughs> so I think that means God wants you to stick around, buddy. <laughs> Joy, thank you. <laughs> you can't get out of it that easy. Anyway, you had that dream, and we and you called me and said you won't do this podcast because you don't want to be thinking about all these horrible things and you've been going through lately, and you don't want to be thinking about how, how how bad you still feel physically from all this stuff you've gone through. So we decided to do the podcast, and about half hour later, I looked at my Apple news feed. I saw this bombshell, $83 million verdict, E.G. Carroll versus Donald Trump. About 63 million of it is punitive damages, or maybe it was 60 million. The rest was, was pain and suffering and compensatory damages. She was a journalist. She claimed he earned, he earned her reputation as a journalist by claiming she was a liar by what she wrote in a book about him. And that was already tried once in the in, in, the, in a federal court in New York City. And she won that uh, and got damage award. And so he's got this uh, new lawyer, Ahaba. What's her name? Alina Haba. Yeah, that, that was the one that, that tried to get, uh, we talked about that in the last podcast too, didn't we? Yes. And she she tried to get a somebody that. that Who was a housekeeper who'd been sexually harassed. Yeah, in, a, in, in, the, in one of Trump's golf course resorts, he's a part owner of. And she got, and she had a lawyer and she was, she was, you know, pursuing Trump legally for, uh, or the not, not Trump, but the but the manager of the golf course, as I recall, or the manager of the motel at the golf course, more specifically, right? Correct. For for basically uh, forcing her to have sex with her, with it with him, if she wanted to keep her job or not work in the uh, sewer under the hotel or something like that, is that pretty well sum it up? Yep. So she had sex with him, and then she she went to a lawyer, and he said, "Well, that's sexual harassment. They bring in this case." So this Habas Haba lawyer, Haba Alina Haba, this solo practitioner, I think, or worked for a small law firm in, I guess, New York, or maybe New York City. Is that close enough? Yep. Uh, she she befriended the woman who was claiming that the manager. Of, this golf course in which Trump owned a piece of uh, Burmester. Is that the name of the golf course? Yes. Uh, it said, look, uh, I'm really worried about you. I think you need help and da, da, da. And, 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 and she, she got the woman to sign some agreement uh, that uh, basically let the golf course off the hook pretty much. Is that right? Yes. And she was given a pittance as a, this all uh, settlement out. and this all came out and the lawyer and i mean lawyers can't go pirate another lawyer's client okay especially if they're trying to win donald trump or anybody else's favor by doing it but what happened so it looks to me and i said this in the podcast that if if this gets before the new york state bar she will no longer be a lawyer if if in fact it's true what she did i don't know for a fact but this is what's alleged 
But anyway, it, it seems from what happened that she earned Trump's favor by doing that on her own. And therefore, she ended up being his lawyer in both the case that came out today and also the case where Trump was being uh, sued by the state of New York, right, for uh, inflating his assets and, and causing lenders to loan him a lot more money than they should and, and all of that. Is that right? She's a lawyer with both of those. Absolutely. Guys. That's it. She's also Chapter and verse. I think she's also his lawyer in a federal prosecution, a criminal prosecution, right? Correct. One down there in uh, South Florida. You got it. She also is lawyer in the Atlanta case. She is the lawyer of record now in the Atlanta case. Another okay. lawyer in Atlanta vouched for her, and she will be trying case in Atlanta. Well, I, you know, just my opinion, looks like she's joined the oldest profession in metaphorical sense, not in a literal sense. I don't know what her private life is like, but as an attorney, talking, watching an attorney operate, she looks like she has joined the oldest profession. And I can't imagine what the state of New York Bar Association's grievance committee is going to do for her poaching that that uh, client away from that lawyer who was representing her against the manager of that golf course in which Trump owned a, a what about a third interest, I think, as I recall. Yes. And uh, so, so Hoppe was on TV tonight. I saw her on CNN, and and I saw some other stuff, and I read some stuff and. She's claiming that they wouldn't take any forensic evidence in this trial against G that e, e. Carroll, e. Jean Carroll had filed the second one. So she sued this Trump twice because after she got the first judgment for about $10 million, uh, Trump kept shooting off his mouth about her, and she, she had filed another lawsuit based on him doing the same thing to her again. And after that, she started getting all these awful death threats. And she was on the witness stand reading the damn tele the emails and the and the exgrams and whatever else she got. People, I hope you die. I hope you, you get raped. I hope somebody comes and kills you and all that. And it wrecked her life. It wrecked her career. And so this time, the jury and Trump went in there and was defending him, trying to defend himself and acting out like he does in the other New York case. And uh, and he was allowed to testify uh, in, yesterday and before it went to the jury. And Hobbes was doing all this. She said, he didn't get to, we didn't get to prove there was no forensic evidence of a rape. Well, they already decided that in the first case. You can't bring that up. Again, it's over. A jury has found him guilty of the rape. So it's a matter of fact. Not of rape, but of, of, of sexual uh, harassment or uh, sexual assault. They didn't. They didn't rule on rape, but on sexual assault. And on that, I think she got a ten million dollar verdict against Trump, and some of it was punitive damages, which cannot be bankrupted. Now, all of his life, Trump has escaped reality. By every time he got in financial trouble, trouble, he he filed bankruptcy and fucked all of his creditors. But you can't bankrupt a punitive dollar judgment. Anymore, you can bankrupt taxes you owe the federal government or child support or student loan. Those are things that cannot be bankrupted. You don't get out from under them. You have to run and hide for the rest of your life while they're trying to collect that from you. He's got enough lawyers. He'd probably be a pretty good, pretty good job, you know, trying to shield it. But I think I could figure out how to get it. I know where his assets are. <laughs> <laughs> and file and, and, and filed garnishments. Uh, on his wages, on his uh, stockbroker, on his bank. Once I get a final judgment, you can file a garnishment anywhere the guy has assets. I've done it. <laughs> I know you can. You got it. And uh, so this jury today gave E. Jean Carroll a $83 million verdict. 63, I think, or 60 million was punitive damages. And I buzz right there, well, we didn't get to put on any forensic evidence, which has nothing to do with this case. 10-minute arc. All right, we got, we're in 50 minutes into it, okay? 
into the podcast? Is that what you're telling me? Correct. And so I'm wondering if Hamas is an idiot or she's just posturing for Donald Trump. Because she may be a smart lawyer. She may know that the argument she's making is, is full of holes. But as Trump's lawyer, her job is to try to win anyway. And certainly she wants to keep being his lawyer. And who wouldn't? Uh, but I wonder if he's paying her. How many lawyers did he steal? I wonder if she's just doing it for the publicity. I wonder how much money she's actually been paid to represent Donald Trump. Has she been paid anything? If she hasn't, then she's not in the oldest profession. If she has, yeah, she is, metaphorically. Right on. Symbolically. I don't know what her private life is. I can't speak to that. She may be, you know. We're just using that as an allegory for hey, her. Yeah. She may, she may be uh, like Mother Teresa in her private life. I don't know. I don't know the woman. And I'm not claiming anything about her private life. I'm just assessing her as another lawyer, observing what I have read online and seen on television. The way she talked back to a federal judge? Oh, yeah, she did that. Where I clerk for a fellow judge, you do that. Oh, Lord God, the spanking would be unbearable. But Trump, you know, is on, on trial, and uh, the federal judge is probably under the gun. He knows he's going to get death threats probably, or she does. I don't remember if it's a male or a female. Uh, no lack, not, I, I can't imagine there won't be death threats against this federal judge. They preside over that case. If they find out who the jurors were, there'll be death threats against them, in my opinion. I don't know if the jurors uh, were, were, you know, their identities were screened or shielded from the public or from the defense counsel or from Trump. That's America. The First Amendment only is in your favor if you are backing Donald Trump. That is a tragedy. Yes, sir. Does this mean I like Joe Biden? Hell no. After what I saw him doing, continuing to send uh, weapons and munitions to Israel after I, I saw yes, Biden ought to be hanged. People running Israel ought to be hanged. The people running Israel's IDF army should be hanged and the people running his hamas should be hanged all of them as war criminals 100 percent in agreement with you is it gonna happen no but no happen. there seems to be no accountability in the world anymore that's what i i know but that's what i think as i'm turning and as a person my god how can you defend any of that from either side? You'd have to be nuts to take sides in that. Or you were so wounded in childhood in some way, physically, emotionally, mentally, uh, you know, Puritan Christian parents, you know, driving you nuts with their dogmas and stuff. Or you were molested by your mother, your father, your brother, or you were beat up by your drunk father, a drunk mother, or brother. That you're so wounded inside. And you think Chris Hedges and Caitlin Johnson's hung the moon defending Hamas and blaming everything on Israel. That you see in Hamas and the Gazans yourself. You identify with them so much that what's happening to them. You feel like it's happening to you, but you don't know this. This is in your unconscious or your subconscious. Right. You have to fucking defend them because they are you. I think any psychiatrist or psychologist or clinical social worker with half a brain would say, yeah, that's probably right. Well, if I'm going to say that in public. Uh, true. <laughs> Nah, I won't stay alive. 
Uh, they, they would say, yeah, Donald Trump is criminally insane. But damn, I ain't going to say that in public, that Joe Biden is a lying, sneaking, conniving son of a bitch. And he ain't that much different. From, he ain't any different from Donald Trump in that sense. But at least he don't remind me of Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. You got it. Unless you're in Israel and, and, and Gaza, then he does. But he doesn't in America. He doesn't pose that threat to America. He poses it to the people of Gaza. And to other people over there. He sends the destroyers and aircraft carriers over there. Now he's policing the whole region. Uh, what the hell? What he should do is bring the Army home and the Navy. The personnel. And line the southern border with them and put them in all the American schools to defend them from the terrorists in America that like to shoot school children with guns uh, approved by the NRA and Mitch McConnell and everybody on the right and a lot of people on the left who love guns. Stop the invasion from Mexico with the army. And we're not letting any more money come from Mexico to burn America, not any more products, not any more people, and no people from America going to Mexico. No people in America are sending money to their families in Mexico. Imagine how that would affect Mexico. Good grief. No gringo dollars? Oh, fuck. Maybe we ought to try to stop the invasion into Mex America from Mexico. Just let them sit on that until they decide that's what they'll do, or they can drop and weather and go away. Because without the gringo dollars, I think Mexico is pretty well fucked. Agreed. All, this, all them tourists, NAFTA, all them companies down there that are owned by America making products that come to Mexico, all that Mexican vegetables and fruits coming up across the border. It don't happen anymore. All them cheap laborers coming up from Mexico. So the American uh, workers... Have get, to take a minuscule wage, yeah, yeah, or no well, wage at all. Yeah, well, they at least get jobs, which the Mexicans and the and the Central Americans are taking away from them. You know, where That's are they? Correct. Taking, you know, hiring Mexicans. I wonder how many Trump magas own farms or ranches or businesses that are employing Mexicans because they work cheaper than white people in America. Okay. Agreed. Where's, where's the patriotism in that? Anyway. I got off on a lot of things tonight, but I thought it's been pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, well, there ain't nothing awesome about what's going on out there. No, but no one else is talking about it, so that's what's important. Uh, yeah, some people are, but they don't talk about it the way we do because I don't think, based on what I have seen, these people have never had any contact with an angel. <laughs> They have no idea what having contact with an angel actually can entail. That's right. It's not a baptism of water. It is a baptism of fire. Yes. And tsunamis and cobras and, and, and great white sharks and volcanoes and unimaginable things that angels And do. my broken fucking couch. Yes. They sat on your couch and broke the son of a bitch. Three of them, right? Just one. A really heavy one named Kamel. Well, Kamel, the one with the big axe? Uh-huh. <laughs> Did he offer to pay for it? Uh, no, he was short on cash. <laughs> they don't use cash where he lives. <laughs> I come from. So we are in a different position because we know if we don't speak out, we're going to be spoken to by these angels, Okay. And these angels are known in the Bible, but the Christians don't know these angels the way we do. The Jews don't know them the way we do. The Muslims or Islam don't know them the way we know them. But if they did, they might behave differently. So I hope the angels will take that to heart and, and quit picking on us so much and go pick on the people that are causing all the fucking problems. Like, you know, what happens if you tell God what to do? God might have helped and lean over and kiss your ass goodbye, okay? That wasn't how Jesus prayed. He said, Thy will not mine be done, O Lord. He prayed that in Gethsemane when he was looking at the crucifixion coming down. He didn't want it, but that's what he said. Not yep. my will mine be done, O Lord. God's will alone is all that matters. And who knows what God's will is 
until it hits you right between the eyes and you say, oh, shit. And that won't be all you're saying. No. So God has nothing to do with what Israel, Islam, Christianity, America, Hamas, Hezbollah, ISIS, Iran are doing in Palestine or near it. Absolutely nothing. And it is sacrilege to claim God is leading you on and all of that. It is crazy. The karma you're building up, racking up, is unimaginable. And it will come due. It always does. And we have come full circle. One hour. All right. Uh, well, thank you, Bob, for uh, sacrificing your boredom and your pain so that we could relieve you of it slightly by you Listen to me mostly. Shoot off my mouth again. No, I got to shoot off my mouth too because I no. told you how ironic it was that we could actually dis discuss the whole thing with Meadows. But even still with the number of neat print magazines, online magazines, broadcasters, that has been left alone. There were three articles about Meadows that I know about that were in major publications and then they dropped it. Well, do you think they might have got, uh, you know, a, 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 an email saying, you keep that shit up, kiss your ass goodbye? Yeah, I got some of those too, so it might have affected them a little bit differently than me, though. Yeah. The zombie apocalypse has come to America. That's the brainwashed lemmings in religion, politics, online forums, blah, 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 blah. That's don't, them. Uh, don't join a herb, folks, unless you want to become uh, something other than what you're supposed to be. What your soul wants for you. Good night, Bob. Good night, audience. Good night, Sloan. Thank you for being here. Godspeed, everybody. God help America. God help Israel. God help Gaza, Hamas, and the world, because we need a lot of help. Good night. Good night, Sloan. And we do need the help. Amen. Amen.